All right, let's talk about something most of us have probably dismissed at some point, a simple fungal infection. But what happens when that simple problem starts to evolve? We're about to dive into how the world of dermatycosis is facing a really surprising new threat and why, well, the old rules just don't apply anymore. You know the names, right? Athlete's foot, jock itch, ringworm, they're all super familiar. And for most people, they're just minor infections, a nuisance you handle with an over-the-counter cream. They're seen as more of a cosmetic thing than a real medical problem. But what if that fungus, the one we thought we had figured out, has changed the game on us? A new, highly drug-resistant species is quietly spreading across the globe, and it's turning what used to be a straightforward nuisance into a serious medical challenge that can completely defeat our go-to treatments. So, to really get why this new threat is such a big deal, we first need a quick refresher on the familiar foe, the common ringworm we all think we know. Okay, so what are we actually talking about here? The scientific term is dermatocosis or tinea. These are just fungal infections that love to live in tissues that are full of keratin, so our skin, our hair, and our nails. The different names you hear just tell you where it is on the body. Tinea pedis is athlete's foot, tinea carporis is ringworm on the body, and tinea capitis, you guessed it, is on the scalp. And make no mistake, this is not some rare issue. In the Netherlands alone, doctors write over 800,000 prescriptions for these antifungals every single year. And get this, that number doesn't even include all the over-the-counter sales. We're talking about a massive, ongoing burden on the healthcare system. Okay, so let's say you've got a suspicious rash. How do we actually confirm it's a fungus? This brings us to the diagnostic pathway, and this is exactly where we start to see the cracks forming in our traditional approach. So the classic workflow is basically a three-step process. A doctor scrapes a sample from the rash, then they use what's called a potassium hydroxide or KOH prep. It's a neat trick that dissolves the skin cell so you can see the fungal threads under a microscope, but for a definitive ID, that sample has to be sent for culture. And here's the big problem. That last step can take up to four weeks. And this is where the old way really falls apart. Traditional culture is incredibly slow. But even more important, you can't just look at a fungus under a microscope and tell if it's drug-resistant or not. They look the same. On the other hand, you've got modern molecular methods like DNA sequencing. It's fast, it's precise, and it gives you a definitive species identification, which, as you'll see, is now absolutely critical. And that right there, that gets to the heart of the problem. The tools that a primary care doctor has, you know, a visual exam and maybe that KOH test, they're just not enough anymore. They can't detect resistance. This means a doctor could follow the standard guidelines perfectly, but prescribe a treatment that is literally destined to fail from day one. This massive diagnostic gap leads us straight to the main event, the emergence of a new fungal pathogen that is completely changing the entire landscape of these infections. And look, this isn't just some academic what-if scenario. In 2024, the Health Council of the Netherlands put out a formal warning. They use this exact language, a new, infectious, and multi-resistant skin fungus. That's an official alarm bell that the game has completely changed. So, let's meet the culprit. Its name is Trichophyton endotinia. What makes it so sneaky is that under a microscope, it looks identical to a common, totally treatable fungus. But genetically, it's a different beast. It has these tiny point mutations in its SQLE gene, and that gene is the exact target of terbinafane, which is one of our most important oral antifungal drugs. That single mutation basically makes the drug useless against it. This chart here shows something called the Minimum Inhibitory Concentration, or MIC. Just think of it as the dose of a drug you need to stop the fungus in its tracks. For a typical fungus, the MIC for terbinafine is super low. The drug works great. But for T. endotinia, the MIC is through the roof. The standard dose just doesn't even come close to having an effect. So, what does all this mean for treatment? Well, it means our trusted, evidence-based guidelines can suddenly just fail. And that leaves both patients and doctors totally frustrated and scrambling for answers. Just take a look at the standard guidelines for body ringworm. The first line agent, whether it's a cream or a pill, is terbinafine. And for years, this has been the reliable workhorse foundation of treatment. Okay, now let's see how those guidelines hold up in a real-world case. We have a 28-year-old woman who comes back from a trip to India with a terrible rash. Her doctor does everything right, correctly diagnoses it as tinea corporis, and follows the guidelines. First topical terbinafine, then oral. But the infection just gets worse. The two huge clues here, her travel history and the complete failure of first-line therapy. 
That gets her a referral to a specialist, where advanced DNA sequencing finally fingers the culprit, terbinafine-resistant t indotinye Only after they switch her to a totally different drug, itraconazole for a long eight-week course, is she finally cured. This case is a perfect snapshot of the new reality. This isn't just a problem for individual patients, though. The silent spread of this resistant fungus is exposing a major blind spot in our public health surveillance systems. What does this number represent? Zero. Zip. Nada. That is the number of mandatory public health reports required for drug-resistant dermatocases in the Netherlands. Because these aren't notifiable diseases, we are effectively flying blind. We have no real way to track how or where it's spreading, so a silent reservoir can just build and build in the community. So since treatment is getting a lot more complicated, prevention is more important than ever. The advice is mostly common sense hygiene, keeping your skin dry, wearing breathable fabrics, and this is a big one, not sharing personal things like towels or combs. And for stuff like bedding and towels that might be contaminated, you have to wash them at 60 degrees Celsius or higher. That's what it takes to kill the fungal spores and stop it from spreading throughout a household. And finally, I want us to challenge this whole idea that these are just superficial infections, because the hidden costs, both physical and psychological, can be incredibly severe. Look, the cracked skin from athlete's foot can be an open door for serious bacterial infections like cellulitis, but the most devastating physical complication comes from inflammatory scalp ringworm. A condition called a carry-on can develop. It's this massive, painful, inflammatory response that literally destroys the hair follicles. If it's not treated aggressively and correctly, it leads to something called cicatricial alopecia, permanent scarring hair loss. And beyond the purely physical, the psychological weight is just immense. Because these chronic infections are so visible, they lead to embarrassment, social withdrawal, it's awful. In fact, studies show the impact on quality of life is comparable to psoriasis. For kids with scalp ringworm, the visible hair loss can lead to teasing, bullying, and a kind of profound emotional distress that can really affect their entire social development. So, let's just ask that question one more time. When a so-called simple infection can cause permanent disfigurement and a psychological burden on par with a serious skin disease like psoriasis, is it really a minor issue anymore? The bottom line is this. The rise of drug-resistant fungi is a true paradigm shift. It transforms common ringworm from a simple nuisance into a genuine public health threat. It forces us to challenge our clinical guidelines, and it reveals a critical, urgent need for better surveillance to stop the silent spread of what could become untreatable skin infections. Thanks so much for joining us for this explainer.